We are on the advent of roll queue. 222 lock is confirmed for stage 4 of the Overwatch League and if all goes well, we should be seeing that in ranks sooner than later. And since that's the case, I'm going to get you all prepared for the road to come with things that you should be practicing and considering now, before you get blindsided by the huge impact that's to come. My name is Nate, and welcome to Blizzard Guides. I'm going to be going over everything from when we should be seeing roll queue to important things that Blizzard should consider and things that you should be worried about, and then the tips for surviving and thriving in the new world of Overwatch. So let's get into it. So first off, what is roll queue or 222 lock? There's an important distinction here. Roll lock is where you pick what role you're going to queue as, and you have to play as that role all game. So if I queue for tank, I have to play tank and only tank, like with the LFG lock. 222 lock, on the other hand, is what you can get with setting up in a custom game, where you have a limit on how many of a certain role can exist, meaning that the first two people to pick a certain role are going to be the only two people to pick that role, but I can swap from DPS to tank or from another role to another. 222 lock is confirmed for OWL, not roll lock, which is a very important distinction that will trickle down to ranked. So now let's talk release date. Fissure has confirmed 222 lock for stage 4 of the Overwatch League. So now let's talk release date. Fissure has confirmed 222 lock for stage 4 and then, I'll add to the fact that Stage 4 ends August 25th and Season 17 ends August 31st, it's likely that we'll see 222 lock in the beginning of Season 18, not when Stage 4 starts, because we're pretty much confirmed the rumors have been saying that 222 lock will be coming first to Overwatch League in a weird feature update. My best and most educated guess leads me to believe that we'll see it confirmed a week before Season 17 ends, and then we should hopefully go live on August 31st or September the 1st. That should give us enough time to prepare and using some more sleuthing, I actually have a pretty good idea of how it should work. Now to make things clear, 222 lock is what I'm nearly 100% sure is heading to Overwatch. The reason being, it really wouldn't make sense to force players to only play one role since that would either affect SR if we had one SR system with flex players or players that can just play more than one role, or if we had a 3 SR per role system which would be very difficult to implement, and on top of that would lead to scenarios where we just don't have a main tank player, or we have two off tank players, or maybe we have two mercy one tricks, and a whole host of other issues that 222 lock just avoids. While yes, I am aware that insta-locking a role will become an issue with 222 lock, let's be real, that's already an issue in Overwatch where you have people insta-locking DPS or tank or support, and 222 lock nor roll lock are really going to be fix alls for Overwatch, and 222 lock solves all of the problems, or at least most of the problems, that roll lock solves while not creating a ton of issues that roll lock would create. That's why I'm sure that Blizzard just won't release roll lock and will release 222 lock for comp. So now let's talk about meta changes. Unless Blizzard releases a big balance patch, Bunker is going to just be king. If you're not already playing Bunker at your rank, I promise you, you will. So start practicing Bunker heroes. That's Arisa, Hog, McCree, Torbjorn, Bastion, Baptiste, Anna, Mercy, and maybe a little bit of Sombra just because Sombra's really strong right now. Overwatch's tanks are still carry in 222, so you just need to know how to play the space that your Arisa and Hog provide. Or you need to know how to create that space when you're playing Arisa and Hog. That means that you have to be getting pull hook combos, and you also need to back up when your Arisa backs up and play her buckets of space. However, there's one big thing that you may have forgot about that may make Bunker and 222 change as a whole and may not make Bunker be the meta at the time that that comes out. If we're talking 222 lock early September, there's actually a pretty big Blizzard event going on at that time. BlizzCon. Just more confirmation that there's room for big change at that time, and with BlizzCon comes a new hero, and with the new hero comes a big balance patch. Now, this is 100% speculation, but I'm fairly sure that Blizzard, along with 222 lock, will have a huge balance patch that'll favor DPS more so that we see a 222 meta where we have strong DPS without it leading to a triple DPS meta like Tracer Genji Soldier from way back when, because you know that literally can't happen when you only have two of each role. I think the game's meta will definitely feel very different come 222 lock, merely because of the nearly too perfect timing of a new hero at BlizzCon, as the trial for 222 lock comes to stage 4 of the Overwatch League, and stage 4 of the Overwatch League will end right when BlizzCon happens at the end of a season. 
Now changing gears a bit, one word of advice to Blizzard and one thing that you all need to be worried about before I start talking about the implications and directions that this will take Overwatch is the fact that if this 2-2-2 lock doesn't have a system that favors two players of each role based on time played in recent games instead of doing this mess and giving five animains, I have five animains! 2-2-2 lock will be a worse mess than comp is now, and you will absolutely have to have two roles under your belt. So if you only play DPS, it's that time that you pick up a new hero and learn a new role. If Blizzard doesn't implement a, you know, preferred matchmaking queue that tries to make teams balanced and have somebody that plays every role. Personally, I wish that there exists a utopia where this does happen, where everybody plays a little bit of every role, but let's be real, it won't. So Blizzard, please make sure that you make a matchmaker that supports this. But I do want to note, with the recent changes to the matchmaker, if you might have noticed with the severely dropped queue times and that weird bug where it can be 5v5 and the new UI changes, I think Blizzard has already made a really big change to the matchmaker that they haven't told anybody about that they might announce in the future, and we might be hearing about that soon. So maybe keep that in mind so I don't know, Blizzard might have something up their sleeve already. So what exactly does this mean for Overwatch? Is it good or bad? Overall. Like with that change to Overwatch where the hero limit was dropped to one specific hero per team way back in Season 1 or maybe even before Season 1, a lot of players will just simply leave because of that they can't run stupid comps like GOATS or Triple DPS. However, with that said, I do think that this change will keep a lot of players that are thinking about quitting in and it will also bring a lot of pros and well-known streamers back that just don't play anymore or don't play as often because we'll have a more consistent environment to play in which is more enjoyable which will bring back more serious players players who watch the streamers who want to rank up on the competitive ladder. That along with the direction that I think Blizzard is going as a whole, it's just looking to bring back the players that really brought Blizzard to be Blizzard back. So I think that if they play their cards right with the 2-2-2 lock, we'll be seeing a good change with more serious and positive players making a comeback. There's rumors of Diablo 4 for BlizzCon, WoW Classic, and a lot of changes that are healthy for their franchises. So we should be seeing a much better game soon because of that 2-2-2 lock and hopefully some other changes that I hope Blizzard will implement in the future. So this all sounds pretty good, right? Well, yeah, but with all good things, there's a bit of bad. Like I said, 222 lock is good for the game, but I don't think that it's enough. This isn't going to fix Overwatch, and it's not going to immediately bring back players in droves. They'll just come back a little by little. Actually, I don't even think that most players will really be affected by it or care because a lot of players just don't care that much about comp. You'll probably be able to tell just by the views on this video alone and people searching for it. Truthfully to me, I don't think that something like this is big enough to even really warrant months of testing. Honestly, to me, if I was in charge of this, you would just release it, and if it's a train wreck, just say, hey, oops, that was a mistake, my bad, we're removing roll lock or 222 lock for this season. Changing fast and adding more is the meta of the gaming industry today. I mean, look at Fortnite, they get updates every week, so releasing 222 lock after a year of GOATS isn't likely going to bring back all the players who quit and retired after being tired of GOATS. They'll come back slowly one by one after saying, hey, I miss Overwatch. Oh wait, there's 222 lock. If it were up to me, here's what I do in total. First, we need a big change to the SR system. Honestly, I just completely throw it away and bring something new in. I'd add a single hero band system and test that out for a season. If it doesn't work, just you know, get rid of it, change the visuals and the style of competitive and the, the amp and the hype to it. And then the most important thing is add a solo and dual queue ladder and then a 6v6 ladder. Open up the rules of the 6v6 ladder to be more lenient on groups with a big SR difference and give SR a different name with different icons and scrap the season system and placements for a ladder system with real incentives for ranking up. Something like a global leaderboard for everybody to compare your stats against other players that play those heroes and then with the 6v6 competitions like Open Division on a smaller scale for the ranked people and the ranked players who don't want to sign up for a competition that are events that Blizzard organizes where your 6v6 ladder team might end up being good enough to go against contenders or Overwatch League teams and stream that on the Play Overwatch Twitch and something like that. It just needs to be bigger and grander because I can almost feel that Blizzard's gonna hype up this 222 lock to fix all of our problems where it's really honestly not going to do that much and as a YouTuber I really don't want people to expect too much from the 222 lock because I can guarantee you when it drops people are going to be saying it's gonna save Overwatch which really it, it's not. This isn't gonna be as big of a change as you might think which is why I'm making this video and leaving this at the end so that you can keep this in mind and think about it more. So as my closing thoughts, I just want you guys to know that this will change a lot and Overwatch's meta will feel different, but Overwatch as a whole and Overwatch as a game and a franchise 
will still be Overwatch and it won't feel that much different. And if you don't like CCs, toxic teammates, or the general incompetence of some teammates and issues like that, having this will only leave those issues to be and not change anything or just exasperate them more. The only thing that this changes for you and me is that we're not going to have 5 DPS and 1 tank compositions in our ranked games. Blizzard already made a lot of changes to the matchmaker under the hood, which I actually do want to talk about more, but I just don't have the time, so if you want to hear about that, leave a comment down below. So this is pretty much just going to happen if stage 4 of the Overwatch League goes well, but it's not going to change that much. Overwatch will still feel the same, the only difference is the metas will feel different and competitive will be more consistent, but I wouldn't go in feeling like we'll have a new Overwatch come 2 to 2 lock. But anyway, leave your thoughts and comments down below. I do want to note that I have no information that isn't already available to you. Papa Jeff hasn't sent me any top secret emails. I don't know anybody at Overwatch League. Like, this is just me. I have no sources other than stuff that's available online for the public, and I'm just making educated guesses. So please don't send me a cease and desist blizzard. Or actually, on the other hand, do send me one because that'll confirm everything that I put in this video. But to put it lightly, I don't, I don't have any information that players don't already have. But let's be real, I, I did do a lot of research and some detective reasoning that makes me pretty confident with these speculations. If you want to see more, you guys know what to do, and special thanks to these people for Discord Nitro boosting our server, which you can join as well as our Twitter and Instagram in the description right below that like button. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Have a nice day. My name is Nate, and this was Blizzard Guides.